Recently, traces of a pesticide called DBCP have been found in wells in the Central Valley of California. The discovery has involved its citizens in a dilemma increasingly encountered throughout the country. That is, do the benefits of modern chemical technologies outweigh the risks inherent in their use? The DBCP story is a classic case history that focuses on this question and raises others. Questions about the limitations of science, questions about the role of public policy, and about the ability of government institutions to protect society. On October 29, 1979, the administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency signed an order which banned all uses of the pesticide DBCP in the continental United States. His action was the culmination of a series of findings about the chemical starting in the summer of 1977. It was then that workers at a chemical plant in Lathrop, California, near Stockton, were found to be sterile as a result of their contact with DBCP. It wasn't a state or federal government agency which discovered the effect of this chemical on humans, nor was it the chemical companies, company physicians, or industry toxicologists. Oxy employees Ted Bricker and Jack Hodges recall how the workers themselves made the discovery. We began some lunchroom conversations on, on DBCP and, and sterility. We took and the people was, we brought up about not having children. So then Jack and I, we managed to get these people to cooperate in some lab testing on the sperm count to see what their, the sperm count was. Okay, with the cooperation from some people in Martinez, union officials, and the cooperation of the guys, we did succeed in this. Dr. Don Horton, a Berkeley physician specializing in environmental health and worker safety, was called in by the union. Well, after we examined the first group of individuals, uh, from the Oxychem plant, there were 36 men who were working in with agriculture chemicals or their products at that time. Of the first 36, 11 had vasectomies. Of the 25 left, 11 were severely affected, meaning having sperm counts of zero or less than one million, or one million or less, whereas another 11 were relatively normal range and the three in between sort of fit in between. Uh, had moderately depressed sperm counts, but not as low as the really affected group. Further medical studies at Oxy and other chemical factories proved that it was DBCP which caused the sterility. Shell Chemical had started marketing the pesticide in the mid-1950s and funded the initial toxicity studies on the substance. The data was in the hands of Shell Chemical. They had the University of... California through Dr. Hines run the tests. Mm -hmm. Dr. Charles Hine is a clinical professor of toxicology at the University of California Medical School in San Francisco. In studies funded by Shell in the 1950s, Hine found DBCP caused testicular damage in rats exposed to 20 parts per million DBCP. He found less damage at 10 parts per million and still less at 5 parts per million. He then assumed, erroneously, and without testing further, that human exposure below one part per million DBCP should be safe. Hein admitted that his failure to determine the no effect level had been a mistake when he testified. It was probably ill-advised, let's say stupid, not to have gone to it. In retrospect, you can say, okay, it was stupid by those standards but I think that the majority of investigations would have gone to a no-effect level, and I think we should have gone to a no-effect level. I admit an error in this thing. No one caught the error. Not the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, not the State Department of Health. Although Hein did recommend close observation of the health of workers exposed to DBCP when the sterility bombshell broke, the EPA couldn't even find its file on the toxicology of DBCP. Heinz's dangerous one part per million level had become the industry standard without a peep from the government.
DBCP is the nickname for the compound dibromochloropropane. The compound consists of two bromine atoms and one chlorine atom attached to a three-carbon atom chain. The molecule is chemically stable, and although it is fat-soluble, it easily migrates through soil to effectively control tiny root-damaging roundworms called nematodes. Dr. Michael McHenry, a nematologist at UC Riverside, explained that DBCP was unique in that it could be applied to established vines and trees without killing the roots of the plant and with astonishing effects on the yield. This is one vineyard that we've been running some tests in. DBCP has not been applied to this vineyard since the spring of 1977. But uh, even today, we are seeing yield differences in this field. In fact, where we have treated, we are getting approximately double the amount of yield uh, as to where we did not treat. It's very difficult to see this yield. It's uh, elusive. You can get up on an airplane and you, st and you can't see it. The best place is about 20 feet off the ground and looking over across the vineyard. But today we might be able to see, uh, if you imagine enough, we might be able to see one of the differences. Remembering we're talking about double the yield. This row was never treated with DBCP. And if you look down across the cross arms, you'll see that there's not quite as much wood on those uh, vines. Vines which had been treated with DBCP showed much more growth. If we go to where a treatment uh, has been made, uh, we can see, if we look above the cross arms, uh, a great deal more wood in those vines. It's probably as easy to see this time of the year as any other time because if you go out and count grapes and count uh, bunches, uh, you still don't see the effect. Two times you see it, right in the how, and uh, when you uh, bring in the gondolas in the, in the harvest. Production of DBCP boomed, and by 1976, 800,000 pounds were applied annually to California cropland. After the sterility problem was discovered, the EPA suspended most uses of DBCP, only to reverse themselves a few months later under intense pressure from agribusiness. But in the spring of 1979, California officials reported that the Occidental Petroleum Plant in Lathrop, the same plant where workers had found themselves sterile, had been discharging wastes containing pesticides, including DBCP, in an unlined pond at the plant site for at least nine years. Further checking revealed DBCP contaminated groundwater was being pumped from hundreds of wells in the valley. Richard Haberman of the California State Health Department. Okay, in the past two and a half years, our department has sampled probably between 2,500 and 5,000 wells and found pesticides serving a population of approximately 200,000 people. We find that there's an area in Fresno County where approximately 50,000 people are continuously receiving water that has got this pesticide in concentrations exceeding our health standard. The standard that our department set for use of wells was a one part per billion standard. Wells that had more than this we recommended not be used unless the public were notified and notified that they should boil the water and drink bottled water. We found wells in this area that had concentrations up to 33 parts per billion or 33 times the standard set by us. So it's not uncommon to have wells that have 10 to 20 parts per billion of the pesticide and we have some communities that have all wells over one part per billion and are serving their population on a daily basis with these wells. The technology upon which these fantastically small measurements are made with such an incredible degree of accuracy is relatively new. Three instruments, the gas chromatograph, the mass spectrometer, and the computer are linked together to constitute a powerful